I'm Kaylee, and today I am reviewing Shirley by Charlotte Bronte. I have so many things to say about Shirley. This video is going to be ridiculously long, but please stick with me because I got a lot of things to say. Please do subscribe to this channel and give this video a big thumbs up. It really does help me out and makes me glad to know that you are enjoying my videos. Caroline and Shirley are very dear friends, but their friendship is tested when they both appear to have fallen in love with the same man. They never speak of it and they each suffer alone until the truth can be known. And Robert Moore is a mill owner who is threatened by his ex-employees when he brings in machinery to replace their jobs. A riot ensues and the mill is attacked. Robert must act swiftly and decidedly if he is going to save his business. But he doesn't leave enough room in his heart to show compassion for the poor. He struggles to find a balance between charity and justice. I really love that this book uses industrialization as a major theme and the setting. It provides excellent action and drama for the plot and I love the actual history that is being represented. However, I wish that the industrial theme had been explored even farther. I just wish there had been more about the relationship between the master and workers and just the politics and the pride of each of these different groups. However, the scenes that do explore this do it very well. The theme of unrequited love is explored extensively in this book. There is a deep psychological analysis going on about depression and heartbreak and how suppressing your emotions can have an effect on your health. And it's not just about romantic love. Caroline longs to know her parents, whom she doesn't remember, and she is craving family connections, but she's left alone, loving the memory of people who cannot return her love. There are also themes of being lonely in the middle of a crowd. Caroline especially finds it difficult to approach people or find friends with whom she can truly connect. One of my favorite parts of the story was when Caroline finds it difficult to connect with people. Everybody just seems to have small minds and meager hearts. But then she starts to really look at some people in her social circle. And she finds several people that she had previously dismissed actually have really good and amiable qualities. And she starts to cultivate friendships with them and that eases her loneliness and depression. This book is of course known as Charlotte Bronte's most feminist novel. I really love the scenes where Caroline and Shirley are longing to be able to take action in their lives with the kind of freedom that men have in their society. Caroline wishes that she could go out into the world and do something useful, but her only respectable or viable option is to become a governess. There's a quote in the book where Caroline says, I believe that single women should have more to do and better occupation than they possess now. I really love how Charlotte Bronte approaches this subject that there is something wrong in a society that has no scope of independence and respectable work for educated single women. And through the characters, uh, they contemplate their options for self-reliance in a logical but a passionate way that is very compelling. It's especially meaningful to read about considering how the Bronte sisters' own options for an independent life were very constricted. I really love the vigorous writing style and all the engaging dialogue. Each scene has humor and drama that are beautifully balanced. There are many serious subjects, but it's wonderfully blended with fun and laughter too. And of course, I love the rich vocabulary and the metaphors that just bring new perspectives to life. It's truly genius writing on so many levels. I was actually surprised to find the romance so flowery and sentimental. I didn't think that that oh my darling, your eyes are like the stars kind of stuff would really be Charlotte Bronte's style, but somehow I liked it. It felt in keeping with the characters and the expression of their personalities. And it had that sharp Bronte flavor to it that kept it from being too sappy or silly. And now we get into the characters. And if you know me, you know I'm a character driven reader. And so I, I'm going to be talking about characters for a while. <laughs> I have a lot of things to say about the characters. 
First of all, our main character really is Caroline. Caroline has such a gentle personality. She is definitely an introvert and has to really call on all her courage just to teach a class at church or go to an event where she'll have to talk to lots of people and serve tea. However, she does. She teaches the class. She goes to the event. She talks to the people. She makes conversation and selflessly puts aside her own wants and needs in order to meet the needs and expectations of others. She sometimes appears weak, but in many ways, I think she's the strongest character in this entire book. She is the type to just suffer quietly and never ask for help. She is meek, but in the sense of having self-control. She is humble, but in the sense of thinking of others before herself. She is intelligent and innocent and also wise and mature in some ways but sort of childish in other ways. She's wonderfully complex. She seems to understand people in a deep way and has an instinct for knowing just how to talk to them. She can be shy but she speaks out strongly when she's confronted with injustice or censure. I loved one scene where she picks a fight with this mean old gossip and she doesn't even care if she offends the old lady because Caroline knows that she is in the right. It's this high moral sense of what is fitting and right that gives her this social courage. She comes close to being angelic, but it's her internal suffering that gives her this steely resolve and gives her personality a little bit of bite. I was just so impressed with her intelligent thoughts and feelings through the ups and downs of the plot. Her generous heart never wavers. Although Caroline is really the central character, Shirley is the titular character because of the effect she has on everyone around her. She is the focus of so many other characters and the catalyst of their own stories and their character arcs. Even when Shirley is not in a scene, the other characters are often talking about her. And when Shirley is in a scene, she leads the tone with her witty dialogue and her quick thinking. So I read in Charlotte Bronte's biography that Charlotte Bronte actually modeled Shirley's personality after her sister, Emily Bronte. Wild and passionate and unruly and unconventional. And she is absolutely willful. I love that Charlotte Bronte doesn't shy away from Shirley's faults so that Shirley is a well-rounded, realistic character who feels larger than life and, and bigger than the words that describe her. She is a good person, but she is not an angel. I feel like she is this wild tigress who is holding herself in check. She's pulling herself back by her own leash. She has so much potential for extreme good or extreme evil and she, she makes the choice. No one chooses for her. She has the power to choose who she will be and she chooses good consistently. And I just adore her for it. <laughs> Robert Moore is a complex character as well. I loved seeing his character development. He goes through more changes than anyone in the book and he is almost like a completely different person by the end. In the beginning, he can be quite harsh and cold and he's very solitary and unwilling to form any strong friendships or strong attachments. However, he goes through the fire. He stares down destruction and his life has changed. It's powerful writing and so engaging to read about. I don't know that I really like him though. I found him infinitely interesting, but somehow I don't quite trust him. He's a little too calculating and careful. A, a man like that might do anything, anything at all, and find some logical reason for his wickedness and just walk away without remorse. Hmm, that's why he needs a good woman to keep an eye on him. <laughs> he can be kind and soft-hearted, but he needs a balance in his life to keep his baser tendencies in check. He can be quite noble and high-minded, and I was glad to see him humble and penitent in the end. I feel like he really changed. He learned, he grew into a better person, and I love that about him. Robert's brother, Louis Moore, I don't know if it's Louis or Louis. I don't know. I feel like it's French, so it should be Louis. So Louis Moore is even more of an enigma than his brother Robert. I don't think I quite like him either. <laughs> I am fascinated by him, enchanted with his charm and his poise and strength, but I don't think I quite trust him either. He is so very calm and collected. 
I was delighted with the one time that he lost his cool and acted without thinking. Finally, the real Louis without this carefully constructed facade. If he would just let down his guard a little more, then I would have room to like him plenty. I was captivated by his romantic journal entries. But he would insist on saying chauvinistic things about taming Shirley. And I'm thinking, boy, that girl has already tamed her own wild nature without any help from you. I mean, just get off your high horse and leave other people to learn their own life lessons without you teaching them from your high pedestal of perfection. I, he, he's just so annoying, but still he is fascinating. I just, Ah. One of the great things about this book are the fabulous side characters. Half the time the author would introduce a new side character and take a lot of time to set up their character, their personality, their background, and halfway through I'm bored and I'm like, I don't care about this side character, take me back to my main characters. I don't have time for these insignificant side people. And then, oh and then, somewhere along the line in the story, that little side character pops up again and they're suddenly important to the plot. They're doing things and saying things and making a difference. And now it all makes sense of why I needed that setup for them before. And now I care about that character. I desperately care. Now I am totally in love with this adorable side character. So one of the side characters that stole my heart was Mrs. Pryor. She is an enigmatic, very interesting character. Her personality is very eccentric. She has this quiet emotion about her that makes the reader think she is hiding something. I just loved her story arc where we gradually, little bit by tiny little bit, we get to know her better and understand her and eventually we learn some of her secrets. Another side character that I loved was the pastor, Mr. Hall. He only has a few good scenes and some really lovely dialogue, but I found myself wishing for more scenes with him. All of the other characters in the story just love him. He's wise and good and kind. He's really cheerful and his dialogue is also encouraging. He is this steady rock of faith. He actually reminds me a lot of my dad. So no wonder I wanted more scenes with him. The York family are all strange and astounding. Each of their personalities are so forceful and stormy in each of their own ways. I think if I knew them in real life, they would just make me tired. <laughs> they are so energetic. The one York family member that I completely fell in love with was that little hooligan Martin York. He is a selfish little rascal with a heart of gold. <laughs> I loved his storyline. Overall, I loved this book so much, I gave it five stars. Even the bits that I didn't really quite like still fascinated me. Do please leave me a comment down below and let me know what is one of your favorite books by Charlotte Bronte. Thanks for watching, please subscribe, and remember the right book in the right hands at the right time can change the world.